Good morning, neighbors. You know, often when I begin these, we'll sing a song, and I'll invite you to sing with me or pull up your chair on this beautiful day. And uh, But it, sometimes we take these things for granted that we can just worship the Lord like we want. You know, many churches throughout church history, they've had to do it in the underground or in hiding or in, even in catacombs, you know, and, and which is kind of fitting, you know, in a place where, you know, basically a graveyard and uh within the ground and uh we are to die to self but they had to do it in great danger and there was this thing called the odes project and they released an album in 2008 but what they did i want to read some about it said have you ever wondered what it would be like to worship with the first followers of jesus thanks to an early 20th century discovery that led to the translation and production of the odes project O-D-E-S, Odes. We can actually get a taste of what authentic Christian worship would have been like nearly 2,000 years ago. In 1909, a man named J.R. Harris discovered fragments of what are now known as the Odes of Solomon. But they were written between 80 A.D. and 125 A.D. They were written in the languages of ancient Syriac and Greek. These 42 Odes were penned at the dawn of Christianity, shedding new light on how the first Christians worshipped. Out of all the music and literature that have been uncovered from this early era in church history, the O's have held up the most to scriptural integrity. So though they've discovered other things, these ones they've really held to what we know as the Bible, you know, that, that matches with all these things. Another characteristic of these ancient hymnal, of this ancient hymnal that scholars have pointed out is the striking similarities this collection has to the book of Psalms. So they, the question is, who wrote these odes? This is still a mystery. Many scholars have speculated that the writer was a disciple of John, or at least a strong admirer of his letters to the early church. This is mostly due to the strong connection they have to themes found in the Gospel of John, such as light and life. But as amazing as this discovery is, it wasn't well known until a few years ago um, when Dr. Charles Fromm teamed up with composer John Schreiner to adapt an English translation of these early Christian songs to music. We have to remember these people didn't speak English. There was no English at this time. And uh, so these men, they translated it, and then they decided to put it to music because there was no music with the words. And uh, But they tried to reflect the music, the theme, and time period of when these songs of praise were originally sung. But to put it into context, many of the Christians at this time would have been facing stark persecution by Roman authorities. At times, Christians were taken away, and brutally killed in the public arena for their faith. Therefore, early Christ followers had to worship in secret. They would meet privately in houses or catacombs praying. They wouldn't be caught. So though you, you know, my, and myself, you know, see here I'm sitting at my nice comfortable home. Got my picture of Laurel and Hardy over here. Welcome to Bedford Falls and the magnets from where uh, I've taken road trips. But we have to remember it may not always be like that. You know, these people, they had to, they wrote these songs in private and quiet. You know, you weren't filling stadiums, you know, like a lot of worship groups can do now, or even in our, in a, in a smaller church, you were in grave danger, but still they found it worth it to worship the Lord, to praise him because it would give them strength. And David, he didn't just write songs when everything was going great. Sometimes he said, out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. You know, will you hear me in the midst of my troubles? But we're going to sing uh, Ode 40. So I know my mom knows it. But uh, I've sung it a couple of times in church, not real often. But I think these words are very beautiful. And when you can think 2,000 years ago, people in hiding were singing this together, crawling out to the Lord. And this is actually a very beautiful, positive song. And you think, my goodness, Lord, would I write such a song in the midst of trials and persecution? Grace pouring forth like a fountain flowing, our hearts open wide to sing your praise, and our sound. Become sweet 
with your anthems ringing praise to the name of the Lord sing hallelujah sing Think about when these words were written. These people are under great persecution. And it's not just prison. It's being fed to wild animals. It is being beaten. It is being burnt at stakes. It's being crucified and all these things. You can understand the comfort that someone wanted to bring when they're writing these words. 
Let us who are afraid find refuge in Christ and redemption assured in his name. By day and by night, we delight in your love. You know, that could be a natural day or night, or it can be a spiritual one. Days when everything seems to be going great, and days when things seem to be going terrible. When you're seeing your family stripped away from you, when you're seeing people die who you love, you know, if you, hey, take a chance, and you can find it online, or read a modern-day version if it helps you, Fox's Book of Martyrs. They watch their children be murdered in front of them. They watch their old people be murdered in front of them. And they would be torn to shreds in front of screaming crowds. And still, they're writing, sing allelu. In your light, you shine forever. Shine in us, O Lord, forever. We are the light to the world. When everything's bright and sunny, a, a candle won't show much light to the world, you know. But in the midst of great darkness, when the tests and trials come, that's when people, let's see it. Let's see it. You prove it. And let me see this in you and I like because it says grace pouring forth like a fountain flowing what is that not only his grace but we're pouring our love out for him our hearts open wide to sing your praise and our sound becomes sweet you may be the worst singer in the world and maybe you won't ever stand before groups of people singing but with people or alone in your home you can pour out and it says our sound becomes sweet None of us is nearly as good a singer or musician as an angelic spirit. But it says, our sound becomes sweet with your anthems ringing. Praise to the name of the Lord. And so I thought, well, let's go to uh, the book of Psalms and read something. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. This is a man who understood war, understood battle. He understood what it was to suffer. But he says, though an army would encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Because what? Why? Because there is one thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I would be in his presence. In the midst of great trials and tribulation, and to behold his beauty, and to inquire in his temple. Remember, there is no temple in David's day. But he said, I want to be in the presence of the Lord. I want to be in, there with him. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, Seek my face, my heart said to you, Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. And I read that verse one time in service. I looked out and I saw people who I knew their family life growing up was not, is not a, was not a good one or is not a good one. But when they hear that, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. He will lift me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path again because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. God bless you all. And remember, God is with you.
And if God is with you, who can be against you? In Jesus Christ's name, amen.